First things first, surprises are coming from SpaceX. SpaceX has just completed final test, the static fire test. Likely one of the last steps before SpaceX's next high altitude Starship launch attempt. SpaceX successfully cleared the test with Starship SN9 for its first triple Raptor static fire test. This clears Starship SN9 for very first flight attempt this weekend. SpaceX got necessary permission for high altitude test with Starship SN9. SpaceX has another static fire test window available for today with permissions given for the flight test on a January 10th, which is Sunday. If all goes well, SpaceX will attempt 12 and a half kilometer flight test on Sunday the 10th. I'll do a live stream event, so please join me for that. In not too distant future, SpaceX will start testing the most powerful rocket ever built. 72 meter tall, 9 meter wide, powered by anywhere between 27 and 30 Raptor rocket engines, super heavy booster rocket that is being developed by SpaceX for past three years, once completed, will be the most capable, most powerful and most efficient rocket ever built by human hands. I know this might sound like some sort of a clickbait headline, but information stated in this sentence are all accurate and a fact. Yes, Saturn V might have reigned supreme for many decades, but new era calls for new rocket, capable of same feats as Saturn V, accomplished in late 60s and early 70s of the past century. But in 21st century, we need ideas and technologies that will take us a step further from the traditional rocket design. Super Heavy Booster is unconventional, cutting edge and very promising technology that will revolutionize of how we access space in coming decades. Unlike conventional and trusted design used by many rocket companies for many decades, SpaceX has managed to develop a rocket that like a conventional plane can be reused many times. In case of Super Heavy, SpaceX hopes to reuse the same rocket at least 50 times Although Elon Musk mentioned reusing same Super Heavy booster as many as 100 times. SpaceX has also developed a very powerful rocket engine that will power Super Heavy and Starship. The engine aptly named Raptor is one of the most efficient rocket engines ever developed. A full flow stage combustion engine that uses liquid methane and oxygen fuel mix to power the engine, all under whopping 270 bar chamber pressure. Just to add, higher the pressure inside the combustion chamber, higher the efficiency of that engine. However, I'm making a separate video on that subject, so I'll leave it that for the future video. Recently, Elon Musk said the first prototype of Starship Booster, also known as Super Heavy, could be finished and ready for flight testing in a few months from now. This statement doesn't surprise me. The fact that BN1 or Booster number one is 70% or 80% complete as we speak. Super Heavy is a truly monster rocket, standing just over entire two-stage Falcon 9 rocket at 70 meters tip to tail. The Super Heavy booster tasked with getting Starship about a quarter of the way to orbit will unequivocally be the largest rocket ever built. Equipped with up to 28 Raptor rocket engines capable of producing more than 7,300 metric tons of thrust at liftoff, Super Heavy will be the most powerful rocket ever built, respectively outclassing Saturn V by considerable margin. Quite likely, Super Heavy won't be equipped initially with more than three Raptor rocket engines. This number will rise as testing progresses. Nine and even 12 Raptor rocket engines will be added. Experience with Starship testing plays into hands for SpaceX and I predict SpaceX will test full-on Super Heavy with all 28 Raptor rocket engines before year is out. Starship Super Heavy is almost 80% complete with the first eight Raptor thrust structure a shared tank dome and an extra wide transfer tube needed to feed liquid methane through Super Heavy's liquid oxygen tank were spotted at SpaceX Boca Chica Texas factory. SpaceX may already have all 38 of the steel rings it needs to complete Super Heavy BN1, staged around the built site, with BN1 
forward dome already in a stacking process in a high bay and its common dome more or less ready to join it. The only major parts missing are the first super heavy engine section and landing legs. However, the complete article which I expect to happen by the end of this month, equipped with two three Raptor rocket engines, won't be ready to take any payload anywhere near 100 km altitude Super Heavy was designed to do. Super Heavy testing phase will start with initially short 150 meter hops. Perhaps two three such tests will be performed to make sure all is well before extra Raptors are added for more elaborate tests including 5, 12 and then eventually 20 km flight test, which no doubt will happen as progress is made in testing Super Heavy. In last week's tweet, Musk said something quite interesting about future Super Heavy and landing the monster rocket. Elon Musk mentioned in his tweet that Starship Super Heavy booster could forego landing entirely, relying instead on a crane-based solution to recover Super Heavy, something that I personally didn't expect, however quite unique in concept as landing would need to be executed to a very high precision and ideally in a good weather. The benefits will be equally significant, entirely eliminating the need for the expensive recovery assets, time-consuming transport and even the time it would take to crane Super Heavy Booster back into the launch mount from a path adjacent landing zone. However, the risk would also be considerable, as any mistake would destroy Super Heavy and the landing pad, including the launch crane and support structures. Structurally speaking, Super Heavy would need to be reinforced the same way carrier-based fighters such as F-18 Super Hornets are. Landing gear designed to deal with the massive stress which makes most carrier-borne aircraft somewhat heavier than their land-based counterparts. Question is would SpaceX need to reinforce parts of the Super Heavy to meet the demands of such highly risky maneuver? From what I understand, and correct me if I got it wrong here, SpaceX will literally catch Super Heavy in mid-air grabbing the booster before it can touch the ground by somehow slotting an elaborate launch tower arm underneath its steel grid fins. Although such solution sounds about as complex and risky as it gets, it would technically preclude the need for any and all booster recovery infrastructure. Be as it may, it looks to me SpaceX will still need to build some sort of landing gear for Super Heavy if SpaceX plans to deploy Super Heavy in Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport system as demonstrated in last year's video of the concept. Whatever the case, SpaceX is showing some interesting conceptual ideas that might give us insight into thinking and what we might expect in the coming months in this regard. As I type this, Orbital launch pad is under construction at Boca Chica SpaceX facility and that might be ready by middle of this year for full on super heavy testing. However, I don't expect orbital or suborbital tests with super heavy or starships this year. I presume SpaceX will continue with intensive program of flight tests with starship and at some point, and I assume this could be as early as April, SpaceX might start testing two starships at the same time. After all, SpaceX still needs to obtain 25 certified flight tests with Starship before they can even start talking to NASA for future manned flights with a Starship. When it comes to manned flights, SpaceX has secured another famous traveler scheduled for later this year. SpaceX will launch Tom Cruise aboard Crew Dragon to space station this year. Although it was hinted Tom might get a seat on a Dragon as he's filming Mission Impossible, is it 6 or perhaps 7? Sorry, not fan of Tom Cruise or MI franchise. In May last year, NASA Administrator Jim Brandenstein announced will collaborate with Hollywood and actor Tom Cruise to film a movie on the International Space Station. Cruise will launch aboard SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft that will be launched into orbit atop of company's Falcon 9 rocket. Tom Cruise's flight is managed by Axiom Space, a startup from Houston, Texas, founded by Michael Suferdini, 
who served as NASA Space Station Program Manager from 2005 to 2015. Axiom offers space tours for civilians to visit ISS. The company also has ambitious plans to build its own space station in low Earth orbit. Axiom signed a deal with SpaceX to launch a crew of four passengers aboard SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. Among the four passengers are Tom Cruise, film producer Doug Lehman and Israeli fighter pilot Eitan Stibol. They will fly alongside NASA's astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria, who will be mission commander. During the mission called AX-1, they will embark on a 10-day voyage to the International Space Station and experience beautiful views of Earth. The AX-1 space tour is currently scheduled for October. I'm guessing here now, but what if SpaceX hopes to test both Starships SN9 and SN10 on a week starting on 25th through 30th of January? I mean Starship SN10 is all but complete and it is ready to roll out. In fact, I predict SpaceX will roll out Starship SN10 on the 12th, perhaps 15th, if they need to add final touches and take time with the quality control. If so, there is a good chance they can start pre-flight tests with SN10 as early as on the weekend of 15th through 17th of January. Not sure all these tests can be done in short weekend, but if they do ambient pressure tests on the 15th, followed by the full wet test on the 17th, they could theoretically do static fire tests on the 20th or around that date. However, this is more optimistic time frame, but it can be done. If possible, SpaceX could complete all the necessary tests with both Starships by 24th of January. And starting week of 25th, SpaceX could fly test both Starship SN9 and SN10. I know it might sound very optimistic time frame, but it is doable. I think knowing Elon Musk, he might just want to go for it. Watch this space is all I say. Back to Super Heavy. As of this video coming out, SpaceX hasn't specified any test schedule regarding Super Heavy. What we know so far, and this is directly from Elon Musk himself, is that Super Heavy testing will start in the next few months. I personally think it will be in early April. Although Super Heavy is almost complete, there are a few bits that are still missing, as mentioned before in this video. Super Heavy will start initial 150 meter hop. Very same test performed by Starhopper and Starships SN5 and SN6. For this initial hop test, Super Heavy won't need more than three Raptor rocket engines. Once these initial tests are completed, SpaceX may attempt more complex and higher altitude tests. 5000 meter tests initially performed with three Raptor engines. This 5000 meter test could happen in early May to mid May, if initial 150 meter hop tests were performed in early April. However, there is also a good chance SpaceX by this point will complete another Super Heavy and use this one for 12.5 km test. This would speed up Super Heavy testing considerably and minimize risk and speed up the testing process. However, it is dubious if SpaceX would perform any orbital tests this year, even with two Super Heavy completed this year, and performing set of required tests with orbital launch completed by mid-April, I could see potentially SpaceX taking a big risk and trying to perform orbital tests in October this year. This is a big if, but it could happen. This is if all stars align and all goes well. I remain an optimist and wait and see. Next video is on Monday, the 11th of January. Sorry for coming out late with this video. I was hoping there will be news regarding Starship flight test. It looks like now SpaceX will flight test Starship around week of 27th of January. If there are any news or any changes to this date, I'll make sure to post news about it and I'll of course live stream the event as well. I'm working on another lengthy video looking at the planetary habitability. The video is looking at what makes a planet suitable for life. I'll try to upload that by the end of next week. By the way, if you like this video, please press like, share this video and consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Links in the description.